Good crafter noon, everybody. Susan Campfield here. I always I love it how I look to see if my mic's plugged in after I go live. How are you, everyone? Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, relax. We're going to create and play today. Um, this is my special monthly event, so I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I call this Crafter Noon, and customers who placed a $50 order um, in the U.S. with me last year, last year, last month, qualified to get a packet to make this card with me. So they've got hopefully their packet in hand and their supplies. And then shout out to my Stampfield Stars awesome team members. Love you guys. Um, you also got an email with all of the parts and pieces so that you could cut your own supplies because you get that awesome rockin' uh, demonstrator discount. So hopefully you've got all your pieces and parts cut and ready to go. So we're going to make a fun fold card tonight. And my team uh, helped me name, well, actually my son named it. Joe named this card again. He named the Flying Seagull card and the Flying Finch card. <laughs> and he had an idea for this one and my Stampfield Stars uh, team members gave it the, the Stampfield Stars seal of approval. So we went with that fun fold. So um, I'm excited to share. Um, I wanted to thank each and every one of you for making and sending handmade cards. I think together we're making the world a kinder and gentler place because who doesn't love getting uh, handmade art from the heart <laughs> a card in their mailbox, right? It just makes everything better, right? It's just a little thing, but it does make things better. So thanks for all you do for making and sending cards. And I hope my teeny little part of that is to help inspire you because sometimes it's hard to make cards when you don't have that creative spark or inspiration. So I love fun fold cards. I started making up my own fun fold cards. Um, let's see, a year ago, January. Um, so we've been doing Craftoon now. What is this, April? So however many, that's math, I don't know, a bunch of months. <laughs> And all of the past Crafternoon uh, tutorials are available to purchase. They're on my blog, suestampfield.com. And I have like something in my eye. Sorry, it's bugging me. Um, uh, this tutorial it's close. It is not done yet. I am so sorry. My goal was to get it done before we went live today, but it's all good. No worries. Um, if you want to be notified as soon as the blog post goes up with all the pretty pictures of all the alternate projects that I've made. So we're going to be making one uh, project together. And then on my blog, I'll have all these other cards. Well, I'm going to show them to you. I'm so excited to share them with you. Um, and so Stick with your train of thought here, Sue. So if you go to suestampfield.com, oh gosh, Jennifer, it's in here somewhere. My moderator, Jennifer Walsh, is hanging out in the comments to help us. So I don't know. Oh, here it is right there. So if you go to suestampfield.com, if you want to buy the tutorials, you can go to shop tutorials for sale. But if you want to just check out all of the past fun folds, just go to suestampfield.com and check out the blog post. There's a blog post for every fold. Not this one yet, but it will be up very soon. So if you sign up, where is the sign up? Right here. If you go to suestampfield.com, click on subscribe and subscribe to my blog, you'll be notified as soon as that uh, post is up, as soon as the tutorial is ready. So let's go ahead and I want to show you what we're making. All right. So I'm going to go over here to comments, make sure I am not uh, missing anything. Uh, if I miss your comment and you need some help, feel free to tag um, Jennifer Walsh. Uh, just put the at symbol and Jennifer and she'll, she'll flag me down and get my attention here. So um, I get into the crafting and don't always hmm, remember to look at the computer. All right, let's flip to, oh wait, let's go to the other camera. There we go. We don't want to see me. We want to see fun stuff. Oh, look, you can see the messy edge of my desk. <clears throat> All right, now you can't. Oh, look at this spotlessly clean desk. Yeah, not true. All right, so those of you that received a packet in the mail, um, you got a note and in the note, it tells you what supplies you need for today. So we need dimensionals, mini dimensionals, glue dots, tear and tape adhesive, your adhesive of choice, and a bone folder. I think I've got all those things on hand. Hopefully you do as well. 
So I'm going to pull out the supplies in the pack and then I'm going to show you the card before we make it. So let me grab the finished card here. It's right behind me. So this is a fun fold card and it's a fun one. Um, it looks like this on the outside. When you open it, we've got this fun little greeting popping out at us. And the whole center panel is also popping out at, at, on, at us. It is, they're all on springs, actually. And so the name of this fun fold is the springboard card. So if you envision a diving board, it's exactly what it's like <laughs> because it's got built-in little bouncy springs in there, which gives the card a lot of fun movement and bounce and tons of dimension and thickness. And of course, it stands for display. Uh, I realize you can't totally see that, but it stands, uh, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so it shows off your lovely artwork when you send a card to a family or friend, um, a family member or friend, they can display it and show off your artwork. So let's go ahead and walk through how to make this awesome card. Let me switch this. So ooh, we got some first timers here. Welcome, welcome. So glad that you are here. So I'm going to start with our parts and pieces here. Now, if you have the packet at home, make sure you save the post-it note that has your, um, your gems for the front on the inside. So I'm going to just hope I don't lose it. I'm super good at losing stuff. I, uh, <laughs> it's a talent. Oh, look, we have a, we have a brown banana on our desk. Um, I'll explain that in a little bit when you see the alternate projects. So uh, one of my, some of my team members requested a certain, um, almost all, all of the alternate projects are with new products from the upcoming catalog. That catalog begins on May 2nd. So um, this one is made with the Irresistible Blooms and the Hello Irresistible paper. The dies for Irresistible Blooms just came back in stock. So I'm super excited that we get to um, show this today. So all of these products are available. The one exception is the embossing folder is a new one. It's um, Countryside Blooms, and that one will not be available until uh, May 2nd. So um, we have some parts and pieces in our packet here. And we're going to start with these. Uh, these two pieces, as they may appear to you, are exactly the same size, but one is scored and one is not. So I'll tilt it here so you can see the scoring. So we're going to set aside the one that has the um, no scoring on it for now. And we're going to start with, um, with this one that is scored. And I realize that's hard to see. But there is a score line that's in the center. Um, so I'm going to start by folding on that center score line and I'm going to get my bone folder here and just give that a crease. Okay, so it's almost like we made a little mini card and we folded it in half, right? Now there is a second score line and I'm going to fold backwards on that score line. So let me just recap here. Um, this is a four by, in fact, I have a little, mm, 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 I have a banner for that. Hang on. Let's get those sizes up there. All right. So the, this piece is the backer piece for our card. It's four and four and a quarter by five and a half. This is the accordion piece for our card and it is four and a quarter by five and a half, but it is scored at two and three quarters and then four and an eighth and accordion folded. So we folded with a mountain fold up and then a valley fold down to get what almost looks like a Z shape. All right. And you do want to give that a good crease with your bone folder. There we go. All right. So that is ready to go. Now we want to adhere this accordion folded piece to our card base. However, we're going to be attaching some decorative pieces on both sides, and I want to make sure I actually get it in the middle. Let me just zoom up a little bit here. And so I'm going to actually attach that decorative piece first. Oh, sorry. Let's hide that. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to, to attach this decorative piece. This is one and an eighth by four. 
and it is embossed with the Countryside Blooms embossing folder. It's a new folder that's coming on May 2nd, as I mentioned before. And so I'm going to just grab my adhesive here and put some adhesive on the back of this. And we're going to take the piece that's not scored, the, the postcard piece that's not scored, and we're going to adhere it to the left. I am leaving a fairly even border all the way around of about an eighth of an inch. You can see I'm about an eighth inch from in from the side, eighth inch from the top, eighth inch from the bottom. That now gives me a guide on where to attach this piece. Okay, because I want it right in the middle. I want to leave room for my other things I'm going to stick on over on this side. So I'm going to line this up so that it is also about an eighth of an inch from the edge of this embossed piece. And I'm going to adhere that to my card. Okay, and it's a little bit easier for me if I just kind of put that flap down um, so that I can uh, see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on here. I'm going to run it all the way around. I don't want this falling off. All right. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adhere it to my card base. Now, if it doesn't match exactly, don't worry about it. We can trim that off with, with scissors. Um, sometimes card stock's eight and a half by 11. Sometimes it's not quite. So when we have, um, a different sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't even show so we'll we'll wait on that and see if we want to take care of that or not all right so it should look at this point like this you've got your backer piece you've got your embossed piece on the left here that one and an eighth by four and then we've just attached that accordion folded piece in the center of our card all right and so now we're going to, hmm, what are we going to do next? Oh, I know. We're going to do our front panel. Actually, before we get to the front panel, let's go to these pieces right here. These are our springs. We are going to make paper springs just out of little scraps of paper. And that's what's going to add that bounce and that super dimension to our card when it's standing for display. So we have three of these. We're gonna use two on the front and one on the inside. They're all gonna be folded the same. So I'm gonna start with this one and we're gonna just, um, it doesn't matter. You can see one end is a little bit wider than the other. Doesn't matter, we're almost doing a circular thing here. So we're gonna fold up like a mountain, down like a valley and up like a mountain. So it's a little accordion fold like that. Looks like an M, doesn't it? So up like a mountain, down like a valley, and then up like a mountain again. Now we have a wider piece here. And then we're going to copy that over here. So we're going to go up like a mountain, down like a valley, and up like a mountain. So we have a second M on this side. Now, when the two are together, it looks like that. These are going to form our springs. We're almost going to make a circle shape with them. We're going to put a little bit of tear and tape right here and stick it on that top piece to make that bouncy, bouncy little spring. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of tear and tape to this. Um, I highly recommend that you put the shorter tabbed piece on top. I know a lot of times as paper crafters, we try to hide those seams beneath. I found when I did that, that seam interfered with the spring mechanism. So you're going to want to adhere that um, smaller piece on top. All right. So let's add a piece of tear and tape. Oops, Susan, other underside. <gasps> That's okay. If I had done it wrong, I just would have folded everything the other direction. We want it on the underside because that's going to go on the top, right? All right, so grab my take your pick tool here and peel off this backing piece. Awesome. All right, here we go. Oh, it's sticking to me. <laughs> it wants to be friends. All right, so now we're going to, you made an extra spring. It's always good to have an extra spring, right, Janine? So I'm going to um, just butt that um, edge of the bigger tab into this fold 
and pop that on right there. And then when I um, push in on both sides, I've got that spring just like that. Now you could crease this with the bone folder if you want. It'll become a little bit flatter, uh, easier for mailing and so forth. Totally up to you. I'm going to repeat that process with all of these, uh, all three of these. Okay. And I'm going to go a little bit fast on this. So uh, just accordion fold those sides just like we did before. Let me know if I'm going too fast. And we're going to wrap this one around and adhere it. So I've got my smaller bit. I'm going to put my tear and tape on the back side. I know some of you uh, uh, prefer to just watch the video live and then make your card after the fact. Whatever you're comfortable with. And some of you aren't able to watch live, so you're going to watch the replay of this. Whatever works, right? All right, so I've got my tear and tape there. Again, I'm going to kind of wrap that around, tuck it right in there and squish it. Boing. <laughs> they're kind of fun to play with. Kind of looks like an hourglass, doesn't it? But they're very bouncy, <laughs> as a spring should be, right? So mountain, valley, mountain, stop, then mountain, valley, mountain, stop. Okay, so I've got my, my, uh, spring here and I'm going to go ahead and put some in the underside and get my third spring all set here. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this off. It, Janine, you said you accidentally put it on the underside. It may not bother you. I just found that it was interfering with the spring. Sometimes they didn't want to fold flat because they were catching on that edge. So I quickly realized, okay, from now on, I better put them at the top because they're going to be totally covered up. Nobody's going to see that seam, right? All right, we've got, how many springs have you guys got? We've got one, two, three. <laughs> oh, they're so fun. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go back to our card. Where were we? Here it is. Here's our card base. So now we're going to get that handy dandy tear and tape again. And we're going to attach two of these to this folded panel right here. So I'm going to take my tear and tape and I'm going to put some on each side. I just do one piece. This stuff is super strong. If you want to totally cover it and do two on there, totally up to you. Totally whatever works. All right. And then flip it around here. All right, so I've got tear and tape on both sides of two of my springs, and I'm going to attach them. I attach them um, so that I can see the hourglass like this. I don't know if there's a right or wrong light. I should try attaching it the other way and see if it makes a difference. I don't imagine it would. So I'm going to pull that off. And it doesn't particularly matter where you put them. Um, I do slide them in. Oh, it's a good, um, I would say a good inch plus. Probably a little different on each one. Okay, it's exactly an inch. <laughs> and then I'll probably do this one about an inch down from the top so that they're um, closer together and kind of more in the middle. But again, I don't know that it, it, it doesn't, it's not an exact science at all. You just need them in place. And I do like to have them somewhat lined up because the person that gets the card can kind of see them looking downward. So um, I don't know, I think it's a little more aesthetically pleasing if they are kind of lined up like that. Okay, so now we're ready for the front panel. And when you get the tutorial, uh, those of you that placed a qualifying order last month, or if you're in my team, you're going to get this tutorial for free. Um, you'll see that um, I have a section at the beginning where we just make this part. And then um, this is different for all the cards because some of them have designer paper, some of them have embossing like this one. And so um, you just want to follow the tutorial for whichever project you are making. So we're going to adhere this four inch by four inch piece of basic white cardstock that it was embossed with that new Countryside Blooms embossing folder. And I'm going to go ahead and attach that to a four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of basic white. So 
Can you, oh yes, I can. I didn't even mention the score markings. I am so sorry, everyone. Let me, I have a banner for that. <laughs> The score markings for the springs. The springs are three fourths of an inch by three and a half, and each one is scored at three and a quarter, one and an eighth, one and a half, two and a quarter. Oh, that's a typo. It should say two and a quarter, two and five eighths, and three. Let me go ahead and just edit that real quick because that's going to bug me. Hang on. Let me just fix it, make it all nice. Uh, let's do a slash. Oops, that's a comma, Sue. Slash, there it is. All right. Save. And let's try that again. The springs are scored at three quarters of an inch, one and an eighth, one and a half, two and a quarter, two and five eighths, and three. And we did three of them. And each one of those are three fourths inches by three and a half. On this, on this little comment, I also have the dimensions for this piece over here on the left side, which is one and an eighth by four. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. And then we're gonna pull this one up because this is what we're working on right now. So we have a four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of basic white. And we have this beautiful layer piece that's four by four and embossed. And I'm hoping that's straight because the camera can see better than I can. Mm. Eh. <laughs> it's a little high, but, or a little low, I guess. Okay, a little high, something. Anyway, good enough, right? It's good enough. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove our, um, oh, let me remove the banner so that we can see what we're doing. There we go. Okay, so, all right. You're right, Janine, it, it should be two and a quarter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove the backings from our, come on, it doesn't want to come off. There we go. Remove the backing from our tear and tape. This is where that take your pick tool comes in. So handy. And this is not thick basic white. I always get that question. This is regular basic white. This card is quite thick on its own because of the springs. So uh, this is one where you might want to consider extra postage on the card. It is, um, I like to use the butterfly stamps from the post office that uh, can handle, they're for cards that are square, odd shaped, or extra thick. Um, and again, keep in mind if you add gems, that is going to add some lumpiness to it. Um, I know some, I, I do send a lot of cards. And I want them to look just like they did when I they left my house. So if I have to put two stamps on it to make that happen, I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> um, if, uh, if you don't like that idea, this card may be a thicker than you want. Um, it's, it's less than a quarter inch, so technically it would go, but when you get it in the envelope, it does feel a bit thick, um, especially if you put the gems on. You might wanna leave the gems off if you want to try to do it for regular postage. All right, so. We have the base of our card. How fun is that? Doing, doing, doing. So fun. And we're going to go ahead. Oh, dang. <laughs> I was I was so uh, productive and I did a stamped version of the greetings for me because I don't stamp good on camera and I didn't, I don't know where they are. I don't know where I put them. Okay, so let's go ahead and decorate the rest of our card. So in your pack, you've got a strip of uh, designer series paper. This is the um, Hello Irresistible designer series paper. And if you see where we attach that accordion piece to the card base, there's this seam. We're going to just um, butt this up to the seam and adhere that. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back of this piece. We're gonna finish up this card and then I have um, some alternate cards that I made with the same design. And these are all with brand new products, which is super fun. All right, so I've got that stuck down. And then we have another piece and this is four and a quarter by, oh, what is it? 
I can't find it. It's four and a quarter. Okay, well, I'm just going to measure it. I don't think it's on my cheat sheet that I printed out. Uh, four and a quarter by a half inch. That's what I was going to guess. But shouldn't guess, right? This piece is um, four inches long by, um, I think it's uh, not in my sheet either. Uh, five eighths inches. And that's going to go right here. Now this part on the left can be decorated many different ways. Um, this is the only one that I did this way and you'll see what I did on the other ones. So it, it just varies. It can vary by the card. All right. So we've got those side pieces all decorated up and these are part of, Jennifer's reminding me, these are part of the online exclusive products. So you're not going to find these in the catalog. Uh, the catalog is about to retire or the new catalog because these are online only. And when they run out, um, they're gone. So just be aware of that. And then we've got our flowers here. So these were die cut from the Hello Irresistible Paper with the Irresistible Blooms dies. You can just die cut the flowers. These are the big ones. There's also medium ones that you can die cut. And then uh, we, the leaves are the same. The stamp set also has images that you can stamp and die cut. I am not allowed to um, st pre-stamp images and send them in class packets um, because of the Stampin' Up! copyright. We want to protect their copyright. Um, so we do die cuts. Um, I'm going to put some glue dots on the back of this yellow flower. Go. And that is going to go, oh gosh, probably right about here. It's kind of a yellowy yellow flower that has some pink to it. So I wanted that one flat because I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals. And so let me grab some dimensionals out of my stash here. Oops, the minis are trying to join the party. We don't need those quite yet. So I'm going to pop these on. and add our pink flower. And then we're going to put uh, dimensionals on the back of our leaves. And tuck those right in between the other two flowers. I should say between the two flowers. These are leaves, not flowers. <laughs> Get it right, Susan. All right, there we go. So we've got our leaves in there. And now we're ready to add our greetings. And dang, I wish I had my greetings. Okay, so this is where Susan tries to stamp <laughs> through a camera on a pre-cut die with cling mount stamps. It's a high degree of difficulty here, so just bear with me dropping things. Okay, so I'm going to use Lost Lagoon. Lost Lagoon is a color that has come back. We had it many, many years ago, and it is now back as part of the refresh. It will be available on May 2nd if you don't already have it. I'm going to stamp Hooray, It's Your Day. Um, this is from the Irresistible Blooms uh, stamp set, and I'm going to stamp it in this Lost Lagoon ink, which just so happens to match the leaves and the, the color of the leaves in the paper. So, okay, that one, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> this is the trickier one. I am going to stamp happy birthday. Uh, by the way, these two labels are from the Something Fancy dies, and this greeting is from the Something Fancy stamp set. Um, those dies are awesome. I use them all the time. If you watch my videos, you've seen these a lot. Um, and right now you can get them with the stamp set with the greetings and save 10%. Both of them will be in the new catalog. Oh my gosh, I hit it. I can't believe it. I got it right. Whew, that was stressful. <laughs> Both of them will be in the catalog, but they won't be available as a bundle. So you would get them separately. All right, let's hope I didn't lose my last friend. Oh, found it. Found it. We got our first found it of the day. Grab your beverage. I have some delicious ice water in my cup. Mm. Let me take a little sip there. We've been working hard here crafting, so got to keep uh, hydrated. I've got my tear and tape here, 
and I'm going to take my last spring and I'm going to put some tear and tape on it. Both sides here. And go ahead and, oops, <laughs> it just wants to bounce, bounce, bounce. So fun. All right, so I took the backing off of that. Now, let's talk placement. Where do we want to place this? So um, this die, this label can go kind of anywhere on the spring, right? Um, I like to have it a little bit, um, you know, you could put it in the middle. You could put it down a little bit. It doesn't matter as far as up and down. That's to kind of personal preference. But I don't want this label to be able to be seen when the card is closed, right? So if we look at this, we kind of break it down. You can see that when that flap goes across, it crosses over the DSP, the designer series paper, and a little bit of the embossing. So I like to kind of keep my inside piece lined up with the edge of that DSP on this card, and then I know it's not going to show. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and stick on my little spring here. So I've got my spring in. Oh, it's about a quarter in, of an inch in from the designer paper. Um, again, you could, that's totally personal preference. I like having that inside sentiment a little bit um, not centered. Um, on this piece a little bit off to the side so that when they stand it for display, it is somewhat visible. And then we've got our piece on there. And that is now, see how much that pops out? Way more than a dimensional, right? But it squishes flat to go in the envelope. Oh, we got a little extra tear and tape. Join in the party. All right, so now when they stand to display, you can see that hooray, it's your day. And you could write, if you don't want your message to show, you could write it here, or you could write it over here. You can sign the card wherever you want. Let's go ahead and add our happy birthday to the front. That's where the mini dimensionals come in. You are so welcome, Joan. I'm so glad you're finding this one easy to follow. It's quite an easy card and so many possibilities, right? All right, so we're going to pop on our three mini dimensionals here. Get those backings off. And let me bring the card back in. And I'm just going to tuck this a little bit under that flower. You can put it wherever you want. If you want it a little offset over here, totally fine. It even can hang off this piece as long as you don't have a dimensional there because there's a little extra room. Up to you. And then the last little bit, I'm going to add some um, iridescent rhinestones to our card here. So they're trying to come off the paper. Boy, that sticky note was really holding good. <laughs> oh, it did come off. Come here, you. All right, we're going to get this one first. And I'm just going to drop these are the large from the set. Um, I'm just going to drop one in the center of each flower. You absolutely could um, add whatever you want. This one was like, I, I ripped it off the glue dot when I was opening the package. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to get in there and get those gems on. All right. So there we have our gorgeous card. Wouldn't that be fun to receive in the mail? And I want to show you, grab an envelope here and I'll show you what it looks like in the envelope. And then oh, I'm so excited to share all of these alternates with you. So I'm going to slide it right in there and you can see it's because of those springs. It's a little bit bouncier. Once you seal it, it is flatter, but especially with the gems right here, it is a little bit thick. Okay. So I could not, I once was told that if you could fit it through this guide on the paper trimmer, that that is the correct thickness to go with one stamp. I'm not sure if that's the case on this particular paper trimmer. It seems a little skinny to me because I believe it can be up, up to, a, uh, it has to be less than a quarter of an inch. Um, but because of these gems, um, yeah, I would put extra postage on this one. All right, are you guys ready to see the alternates? Um, you know, if you left the if you left the gems off, then you might be good. Okay, so 
I'm going to let's grab some alternates to share with you. Okay. I'm going to start with this one. Let me just slide things out of the way here. No, no worries, Susan. I got you covered. You know I do. I'll message you after the video, okay? So this one is the beautiful Countryside Inn uh, suite of products. And that particular suite has uh, a nesting dies in them that are awesome. And so this is our springboard fun fold card with the Countryside Inn. Um, and I also use the um, Lasting Joy stamp set for the sentiments. This uh, frame stamp set is actually part of the, the, the frame around here is the um, stamp that comes with the um, Countryside Corners, I believe it's called. Uh, yeah, Countryside Corners is the name of the, die, the bundle and the dies and then the paper is Countryside Inn. So if you get the whole suite, it's called the Countryside Inn suite. If you can see there's our springs inside and this paper is so gorgeous. There's something about blues, uh, blue and white that is so crisp and clean and calming. Absolutely love it. So this is one of our tutorial uh, cards. We've got a little bit of ribbon right here. It's kind of tucked behind that. Um, <laughs> that frame. There we go. Uh, I did not add any gems to this, but there would be the knot of the ribbon. Ribbon would be optional, of course. And let's go to our next card. Oh, where should we go to next? Oh, okay. <gasps> More new things. So this is from the um, Fresh as a Daisy suite of products. Fresh as a Daisy is the name of the designer series paper. This paper, a particular pattern of paper, has sections that are meant to be cut apart and used for cards. So it was super easy to just cut that out, pop that on there. And then this was another section right here. And yes, inside you can see our adorable little daisy um, on its little spring, spring, spring <laughs> right there. And so the daisies, it's called Cheerful Daisies is the name of the bundle with the dies. And that's where the, um, the wishing you the brightest birthday comes from. The may the years of head be filled with lasting joy comes from the lasting joy. And this reminds me that I want to tell you in the tutorial, I mentioned that if you want to stamp a greeting inside like I've done on this, I highly recommend you stamp it before you attach the accordion piece and finish your card. I did not. And can you tell it is crooked? <laughs> not a lot crooked, but a little crooked. So it would have been so much easier to stamp it if I had done that afterwards. So that's in the tutorial, uh, as with all of the dimensions and walking you through how to make um, these fun cards. So this is alternate number two that we showed our first one and then that's two more okay now we're up to this one um this is another one with the daisies but this one doesn't use the designer paper um this one uses a new cardstock color called bubble bath so good so uh oh carol rosengren my team member carol is popping in to say that without the gems it should be okay for regular postage and it does always help to stick a postcard over the front of the card to protect it. Carol works for the post office. So thank you so much, Carol, for your expertise there. We very much appreciate it. Um, so this one is done with the cheerful daisy bundle. And once again, I use the Countryside Blooms embossing folder. Um, and we've got some iridescent pearls on this one. And then this one, again, I have the little daisy spoing, spoing, spoing <laughs> on its little spring so that it pops out when you open the card and the same sentiment on the inside. And also I stamped it after the fact, so it is a little crooked. So again, you're gonna wanna stamp that sentiment before you put the card together if you don't like crooked so much. Okay, so oh, what should we do next? Oh, let's do this one next. We'll save that guy for last. Okay, so this is um, the Circle Sayings stamp set. And I stamped it in the boho blue. Boho blue is a new in color. Um, every year Stampin' Up! comes out with a new set of five in colors. And then back here we have the, the hobnail embossing folder from the basics embossing folder. And then when you open up this card on the inside, we have a little celebrate cupcake. So what a fun birthday card to send. Um, in fact, in the tutorial I will have, and in the blog post, I will have uh, one of these 
cards for all five of the new in colors. They're in process. They are not done yet. I, I dreamed up that idea right before I went live. So I started but ran out of time. Um, so I will uh, have that set of all five cards in the tutorial and in the blog post. So uh, again, this one opens up like this, stands for display. And it's so, I love this boho, boho blue. Um, this is the uh, in color designer series paper. So with that pack, you get four, four, six by sh six sheets of each of the in colors and two different patterns. So, um, and the circle sayings is a stamp set that comes with this big two and three eighths inch punch um, and they work together beautifully. So, how are we doing, guys? Are you ready for one more card? And this one is, isn't it nice, Carol? I love this set, and it's so easy. Like, this is a very quick and easy card. All right, this next one is for those of you that like to um, like to do a little punch art. <laughs> so this one is, say hello to the little monkey. This little monkey is just swinging by to say hi. So he's on his bit of twine. Now, I could have cut this off, but I kind of like <laughs> that it just lays there as extra. So my plan, um, I traded out, in fact, was to just wrap it under and pop it in the envelope so that when it comes out, it's got this whole length. You don't have to do that. You could certainly trim it off low, um, shorter if you, if you wish. Um, and then the card opens up to have another little monkey with his banana I'm bananas about you on the inside. So, so stinking cute. This was one my team requested when we were playing with the springs the other night. They got a sneak peek at the card. Um, I think it was Lisa that said, oh, you got to do one with the monkey. And so he is really, really fun on the spring. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> and of course, our whole front card is on the spring. So it springs as well. And what a fun car to display. You can just set out the the little um, vine there, if you will. So those are alternate cards. I'm going to bring those in. Quick reminder, if you would, I'm going to, ooh, we got it. We got more. We need to have more room. Okay. We got this one. We got this one. We're not going to have enough room, are we? <laughs> so quick reminder, if you want to uh, be notified when the blog post is up with photos of all of our projects here, our springboard. Oh, I can almost get them all in. Can I? <gasps> if I squish it, if I squish it, maybe I can get them in there. Um, our springboard fun fold card that Susan dreamed up in her head. Um, the idea for the springs I got from Sam Caldecott for a completely different card, and I changed the <laughs> the length and size and whatever but shout out to Sam for the um the idea of having the springs that was super fun and so I'm going to just remind you that if you want to be notified when the tutorial is available the tutorial will have um step by step for all of these fun cards so that you can walk through and make them very easily it's the easy button and uh why make it hard right friends why make it hard uh so if you subscribe uh suestampville.com and you click on subscribe you can choose easy to subscribe to my uh, free project sheet emails that i send out or you can subscribe to uh, the blog, or you can do both. And uh, the blog is where you will see this come up first. So if you subscribe to that, you'll be one of the first to get to get that. Team members, as you know, you always get the tutorial free. Um, customers who placed an order last month, uh, you all know, if you've done this before, if it's your first time, you get the tutorials for free as well. So please don't purchase them. And those will come to you via email. So I'm going to flip the camera around. And... There we go. Thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. Um, I will be going uh, today, this afternoon. We usually do this at night. Um, I will be going live tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time with a completely different uh, tutorial. We're going to go uh, uh, make a fun card with some new products. And uh, by then, I should have those the rest of those in-color cards. I will have the rest of those in-color cards done so that I can show them to you. So uh, have a great afternoon, everyone. Take a sip, and we'll see you maybe tonight. Take care. Bye-bye.